Problem 20, they say, they give you this picture. I'm not going to write all this out. I'll sort of write it out, but they tell you this is 5, that's 10. And they say from that information, <coughs> we know that segment DE is a mid-segment. Just because this segment's half of that one, does that make that a mid-segment? What's the other thing? We said it's going to be half of the third side and it's got to be what? Parallel to the third side. So that's what we need to put here. Uh, I think this is D. Somebody help me out. What's the name of this bottom segment? BC. BC? Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to add this in. Uh, DE equals half of BC and what else do we have to know about DE? It has to be parallel to BC. That's an ugly parallel symbol. So to fix it, we'd have to add that part into the information. Other questions? baseball field. And again, I'm not drawing the whole baseball field. I'm just going to draw the part that we need. That's second base. That's first base. Third base. The pitcher is there. It's supposed to be a P. Ignore that straight part there. Short stop is there. Ignore that part too. Second baseman. Uh, let's see. I, I guess I can put 2B is there. They tell us that the shortstop stands halfway <laughs> in between second and third. That's true, I know. But we go we go by that just, just to make it look a little. Second baseman stands halfway in between uh, first and second. Uh, the pitcher is halfway in between third and first. So what do I know about these two segments right here? They're congruent. What do I know about these two? Does that mean they're congruent to these also? How about these two? They're congruent. If I drew this, what's that segment right there called? Other one. Mid segment, not a median. Don't get those two confused. Like I mentioned that last class, right? Don't get mid segment and median confused. What's that segment called? Mid segment. What's that one called? Mid segment. Triangle's called a mid segment triangle. Uh, they told us that the distance from third to second is 90 feet. Distance from second to first is 90 <coughs> feet. And uh, what they ask us? How far the pitcher is from the shortstop? Yes. Is that what they're asking us? That right there? Yeah. Well, if this is 90 feet, that's a mid segment. What do we know about that distance? It's half of 90. So what's that? 45 feet. What's the distance in this picture? We can find several distances in this picture. Tell me one that we cannot find from the information they gave us. One that's already drawn. Third base to first. We don't know that yet. Since Peyton knew so much though, and he said that was false. Is that was that you or was that Joe this time? He said it was false. Tell me the distance from third to first. 30 close 80. it's like 127 feet 3 eighths of an inch that was close. Why, I think you're close why do you think I might know that because you're a carpenter I'm just like <laughs> <laughs> What do you think the distance from fir or from home to second is? Exact same thing. So why might I know that that? Because there's some catches. Both of them. All of them. Next question. I talked to your son. I was upset. He said, 
You have my dad's class? I said, no, you didn't. You're lucky then. Can we do 25 just so we can see you draw it? Thanks. Yeah, I'm not drawing all that. You know better than that. I'll do it, but I will draw some of it. There, Colin, you happy I did that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the perimeter of that triangle? <coughs> I think that, hold on, let me read it. To create design shade uh, three mid segments of the triangle, then repeat the process for each shaded. A, the perimeter, uh, what is the perimeter of? Yeah, so they want the perimeter of that. What's the perimeter of that? 48. B says, what is the total perimeter of the shaded triangles at stage two? So stage two is this. I'll even draw this one for you. And this is the shaded one. Ignore that stray mark. But these, these each are mid segments. This is 16. How long is that segment right there? Eight. How long is this segment? Eight. How long is this segment? What's the perimeter of the shaded one there? Twenty-four. That one's stage one. Oh, that's stage one. That's what these are. Oh, so I got them backwards. So this was forty-eight. But then they ask us that one. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, that's stage zero. I didn't see that. So, so we got 24, let me erase this, we got A is 24, before that was 48, B we got to do stage 2 which is this, don't, don't get your hopes up Colin because we're not going to get to stage 3. Looks something like that. All of these are shaded, and they want the perimeter of the shaded shapes. We already know the perimeter of this, and what's the perimeter of that big one in the middle there? 24. We just found it right here, right? What's the length of this side in this little or triangle? Four. Four. So this side's four, that side's four. What's the perimeter? Twelve. How many of those do we have? 12, 12, and 12. Somebody add all that up for me. What is it? 60 total, right? 60 total, 36 for the 12s, but then you got to add the 24. Anybody seeing a pattern yet? So maybe let's, let's look at the next one. If I drew in... If I drew in these littler triangles here, these triangles go down half. What's the perimeter of that triangle going to be? Two. Two, two is going to be eight. Close. Six. So the perimeter of that triangle is going to be six. We had the big one triangle, perimeter is 24, then you took half of that to get the next perimeters. That was that. How many of those real small triangles do we have? Six of them? Nine. Nine of them? There's nine of them? Yeah. So we take nine times what? Six. six. What's nine times six? Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Add all those up. What do you get? 114. <coughs> if we kept going, could you use the pattern instead of? Yeah. And that's what they wanted you to see there. Anybody remember? When you're using patterns, what kind of reasoning is that? Inductive. What's the other kind when you're using rules? Deductive. I wish you paid as much attention to learning stuff as stuff. <laughs> Just to help out your learning process, Brandon, that dot's throwing you off. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know that there's a whole lot of hope. You're
extracted by a dot, like me born. And the Mavericks got to look at it. <laughs> if you get distracted that easy. Right quickly, title, triang uh, triangle inequalities. I'm gonna, you're gonna remember that because I'm gonna change the slide here in about three seconds. Triangle inequalities, just remember those two words, that's the title you need. We're gonna learn uh, to do indirect proofs, we're gonna talk about those. We're not gonna do a whole lot of indirect proofs because indirect proofs are just like Another kind of proofs that we didn't do earlier in the years. Anybody remember <laughs> what kind of proof we didn't do when we did the two column proofs? Paragraph. Why do you think Mr. Ebersole doesn't want to do paragraph proofs? I got that exactly. Brandon knows. I don't want to read it. I'm not an English teacher. I can't grade stuff like that. I bet. I bet. I couldn't say, and I couldn't do it. That's why I become a math teacher. I can look at a problem, and say that answer is supposed to be five. That's wrong. All right, it's easier that way. So indirect proofs, sort of same thing. A lot of writing. We're not going to do a whole lot of them. Be able to list triangle sides in order uh, by their size. And I should have put not just sides here. I should also put angles. We're going to list sides and angles of a triangle in order from smallest to largest and largest to smallest, whichever way they ask you to <coughs> use the theorems about triangles. You already seen one of those theorems. Any two sides must add up to be more than the third side. Compare the measures of triangles. I'm going to have Aiden help me here in a few minutes, and we're going to talk about the hinge theorem. The hinge theorem of a triangle. Hold your arm up in the air, Aiden. Aiden's arm is going to be one of my sides of my triangle. The hinge theorem goes like this. If I have a small angle out here where my hand is, what kind of side do we have over there? Is it a big side? It's a smaller one. As I make that my angle bigger over here, what happens to the length of that third side? It gets bigger. That's what the hinge theorem is because that looks like a what? Hinge. The bigger I get, the more wide open that hinge is, what happens to that third side? It keeps getting bigger. The smaller, closer the hinge is to being closed, the smaller the side is. Do what now? And what would happen, so that, that goes back to the theorem that we used on the bonus, right? What would happen to the third side if, let's say this side was this long, this side's this whole thing? What happens to the third side if it gets longer than those two put together? Then all of a sudden it looks like this. It can't go any farther and can we make a triangle? No. So that's why that bonus was impossible. Write down just this top part. You can write down the, the uh, example there if you want. But again, we're not going to do a whole lot with indirect proofs. You are going to have to know a little bit about an indirect proof, especially how to start it. I'll try that. <laughs> you already know 
that you've been to wrestling? Well, I mean, there's only one other kid that they can all wait for us that's decent. So if I see another kid in the box. Is it just a one day thing? All starts Friday. Starts Monday. All right. Indirect proofs. The indirect proof is a proof where you assume, listen closely because you're going to be confused about this. You assume that the desired outcome is false. So we make a statement and we're trying to prove that statement. But we can't really prove that statement because it'd take too much. So we sort of turn it around and we make up the false of that or the opposite of that statement and we prove it. If we prove, if we prove the opposite, if I say, let's do this. I know this statement doesn't make any sense, but I have a pet duck at the house and his name is Fred. So I say Fred is a duck. That's our statement. Sam can't prove that statement, all right? It, it's just not possible to prove it. Yeah. Fred is a duck. So the very first thing Sam's going to do to try to prove that statement is assume that this is false. How could I make this the opposite of what it says? Fred is not a duck. That's what you want to do. You want to make the opposite of the statement. So if I'm looking at this geometrical one that I have right here, and it says a triangle can have at most one obtuse angle, how could I change that to say the opposite of that? A triangle has, if we're saying at most one obtuse angle, what would be the opposite of that? has at least, no, let's not say at least, Let's because that, that includes the one still. What do we want to do? Has at least what? Two. two. So it has at least two obtuse angles. That would be the opposite of that original statement, right? We're saying this triangle can only have one obtuse angle. Then we're saying, all right, we can't really prove that, so we're going to turn it around and do the opposite of that. The, the reason we can't prove this, how many triangles would I have to draw to show that there's no triangle in the world that has more than one obtuse angle? All of them. You'd have to draw them all. All right, that's another thing Aiden's going to start doing, right? He's going to start drawing all the triangles tonight and show and come in and talk to me when he's done. How many triangles are there? How many triangles in the world that you could possibly draw? An infinite number. All right, there's more than that. There's an infinite number. So could A never draw all the triangles and prove it to me? So, so that won't work. But if we prove this, if we prove this is false, and this is what an indirect proof is, is, if we look at this and we prove this is false, what's that tell us about this original statement? It's got to be true. All right? How, which one's easier, to prove something's false or to prove something's true? Prove, something's prove it's false. How many examples or counterexamples do you have to show to prove something's false? One counterexample. How many examples you got to prove uh, or use to prove something is true? All of them. So it's easier to prove something's false. So if I make this statement, this is an uh, indirect proof. If I make this statement, a triangle has at least two obtuse angles. And I'm going to try to prove that. Well, I make up triangle ABC, so 
So I got triangle ABC here, ABC, and I say, shh, I'm not going to take any more of the extra comments, so focus. A is 100 degrees, B is 120. Just made that up. This is our given information here. We're saying that two obtuse angles in that triangle, right? <coughs> what do we know about the three angles of a triangle? They have to add up to equal 180. So the measure of angle A plus measure of angle B plus measure of angle C should equal 180. What do I know about angle A? It's 100. What do I know about angle B? 120. Angle C, I don't know. I could make it a variable X or whatever. You could leave it to measure of angle C. Doesn't make any difference. That's what we're looking for, right? What's 100 plus 120? 220 plus angle C should equal 180. Subtract 220 on both sides. Subtract 220 on both sides. You end up with measure of angle C equals what? Negative 40. Now Brandon's looking at it because he had the, you know, he got on off track there a few minutes ago doing his alphabet and worried about the dot down here. Now if he gets back on track, he'll understand it. He's looking at it like, that doesn't make sense. What's the whole point of this? That doesn't work, does it? So we know that that's false. If, this, if we prove that this statement right here is false, what's that tell us about this original statement? It's got to be true. It's the opposite, so it has to be true. That's an indirect proof. Not actually proving something is true, but proving that the opposite of it is false. And if the opposite of it's false, then we know it has to be true. Pythagoras, when he made up his theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, do you think he took every right triangle in the world and proved that that worked so that it could become a theorem? No. He took every right triangle in the world and, and proved that the opposite of this did not work, that that wasn't never true, and that told him that the original statement had to be true. So that's a count or a indirect proof using a, the counter example. Write this down. This is the steps for an indirect proof. The first thing you're going to do, and that's some of the homework is going to be based on this, or you're going to use this. First thing you're going to do is change that original statement to the opposite. Or, uh, to I don't like saying the opposite because not everything has an opposite <coughs> in the way that you guys think about it. Same idea when we talked about opposite earlier in the year. If I say it is raining outside, what's the opposite of that? It is not raining. It is not, raining. not it is sunny outside. So you guys get opposites mixed up. The opposite of rain is not sun. That, the things like that don't work. What's the opposite of rain? Rain doesn't really have an opposite. Uh, not, not everything has an opposite like that. So if I say, what's the opposite of Brandon? Uh, it doesn't really make sense, right? The only thing that you can really say has an opposite is a number. Like, what's the opposite of 2? Negative 2. Because that's the way it's set up. Even some of the stuff that you probably learn at some <coughs> point, probably had a teacher say, what's the opposite of black? And you said what? Black. White. Does that really make sense if you think about it? Does black have to be the opposite of white? Not really. That doesn't make sense. If, if, if black's the opposite of white, then what's the opposite of blue? Because if black, if black has an opposite, then all colors should have opposites, right? Is, it, is that what it is? That's what I said. I don't know. Is that, is that why Aiden said it? He was just cheating off of Michael. 
No, I didn't even say it. I didn't say it, but I saw it. So, so now we're going back to last nine weeks where you cheated off his homework and stuff? We migrated together. Oh, I only did that one time. <laughs> See, I didn't even know you did it one time and you just admitted it. Yeah, you did. So these are the steps. First, you identify the statement you want to prove. Assume it's false or make it the opposite of what it is. Reason through it logically. Uh, new statement. If you go down through, just like we did on that last example, if you go down through and that new statement you made up is false, what's that tell us about the original statement? It's, it's got to be true. <laughs> so, again, we're not going to do a whole lot with indirect proofs. Main thing I want you to know is if you're going to start an indirect proof, just like when I had Fred is a duck over here, be able to find the opposite of that. What's the exact reverse of that? Well, Fred is not a duck. All right, these symbols, write these symbols down. Don't put the dots. These are the inequality symbols. Notice, as before you're writing them down, what symbol's not up here? Equal. equal sign, because an equal sign is not an inequality symbol. An equal sign is an equal symbol. All right? Inequality means not equal to. What's his first one? Now, everybody says that. Watch closely so you understand this. That's wrong. Got to have that little two-letter word with it. Is less than. If I just say less than, if I say this, five less than seven. What's five less than seven? Two. If you just say less than without the is in there, what's that telling you to do? Subtract. If I say five is less than 7, then that means 5 is less than 7. It means that symbol. So that word makes a difference. What's this one? Is greater than. Good. Is greater than. What's this one? Is less than or equal to. Be writing these down while I'm up here writing them. You don't have to be waiting on me to get done. What's this one? <coughs> is greater than or equal to? And what's this last one? Is not equal to. <coughs> Inequality. Now we're going to use these inequalities. <coughs> Everything that we covered today, uh, and you will have a test early next week, so make sure if you're not understanding something, come in and ask. We're going to use these inequalities, and you're going to be able to, like if I give you a triangle and say this side's 3, this side's uh, 6, we can't find that side the actual length of that side, an exact number, but we can figure out <coughs> by the fact that can it just be any number in the world? No. no. If this is, let's say this is 3 right here, this is 6, all right? It's got to be, it can only go down so small to be that third side, right? And it can only go up so big, a certain point. So we can find a range. We can find a number and say it has to, this number for this side has to be between <coughs> those two. And Joe's got the right idea. What's the highest it could go up to? Nine. Nine. What's the lowest? Negative. No. We'll get to it then. You'll figure it out then. You did the right thing going one way. What's the opposite of going that way? What'd you do to get this high number up here? 
So what's the opposite of that? All right, write this down. Triangle inequality. Tri or, uh, the triangle longer side theorem. That's triangle inequality theorem. That's a different one. Notice it says triangle longer side theorem. I'm going to switch the side here real quick, or the slide real quick. Triangle larger angle theorem. Doesn't even look like it switches. They look exactly the same almost. One's dealing with the sides, one's dealing with the angle and how the, <coughs> how the two relate. One's the reverse of the other. The converse. Shouldn't say the reverse. That's something completely different. So on this one, longer side theorem, all you're going to do with this, you're going to be able to tell which side has to be the longer side. The way you're going to do this, the way I do it is I look at the sides, they tell us all three sides in this case, which one's the longest side? A, B, 13. So uh, I thought I just changed that. <laughs> so that I write long there, biggest. I don't care, Ricky. I don't care what you, word you use. Just tell, hey, that's the longest. Which one's the shortest? So I write short over here. Then what's that make this one? Middle. I don't care if Aiden wants to just write L, S, and M, or B, S, and M, or what, whatever you want to write to tell yourself, this is the longest side, this is the shortest side. Then what you're going to do is you're going to look at the side, or the angles opposite those. Which angle is opposite this 13 side right here? Angle. Angle C. What's that tell us about angle C? <coughs> It's got to be the biggest. Which angle do you think is the next biggest? B. B, because it's across from what? The next longest side, right? So that's going to be the middle angle. And which one's going to be the smallest angle? The one across from the shortest side. So that's the smallest over there. However you want to write it, draw in those arrows, help yourself out. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to write inequalities. And I should have put we're going to write compound inequalities. <coughs> Anybody know what a compound inequality is? It's where you have what? More than one inequality symbol. All right? One thing I'm going to say before we start to do that. On the quiz we took a few about a week ago or so, I had this symbol on the quiz, and a lot of people put what? A lot of people put angle. That's true. A lot of people also put less than. So how are we going to tell the difference between a less than symbol and an angle symbol? We're going to have to make sure we make an effort to do that. And the way I do it and the way I want you to do it is by doing this. You see?
see how big I made those? Those are going to be our alligator mouse, our less than or greater than. Make them bigger than the angle symbols. I got an idea. Like how the angle symbol is just like that. For a less than or greater, we can just put teeth on them. That's, what That's we fine, so do that. <laughs> now, most books, what a lot of books will do for an angle symbol <coughs> is they put that little arc in there so that you can tell the difference between an angle symbol and a less than or greater than. The actual way you're supposed to be able to tell the difference is an angle symbol on the bottom side is supposed to be horizontal. Is the less than or greater than symbol supposed to be horizontal on the bottom? No, it's supposed to be slanted on that side and slanted down on that side. All right? The way I'm going to do it is I'm just going to make these bigger. Just make sure you can tell the difference. And I don't want Maverick telling me, well, I can tell the difference between my less than and my angle symbol. I got to be able to tell the difference between your less than and your angle symbol. All right? Otherwise, I just mark it wrong. If I write these this way, this says less than, which angle is going to go down here? The biggest one or the smallest one? Smallest, right? Smallest. Which angle is the smallest? So that's what we write. Oops. Angle A. That's a horrible A. But. So angle A is less than what's going to go in here. Angle B. What goes as the biggest angle? Angle C. Can you tell the difference between my less than symbols and my angle symbols? Yeah, there ain't no confusing those. What if I wanted to write it with this symbol? Greater than symbol. What angle is going to go here? Angle C, what angle goes here? Angle B, what angle goes here? Angle A. So either one of those, you could write them either way. In any triangle, the longest side is always across from the biggest angle. Smallest side or the shortest side is always across from the smallest angle. What do you think the next theorem says then? Exact opposite of that. Instead of starting with the sides, now we're starting with the what? Angles. Angles a little different because what's the first thing we're going to do on this triangle? We're going to find angle B. How do you find angle B? You know that three angles of a triangle must add up to what? 180. Have your calculator to help me out. That's 128, is that right? How much is angle B there then? What is it? 52. Does everybody agree with that? So write that down, then we're going to write out the lengths of the sides in order. From the smallest to largest and largest to smallest. You got to read questions carefully on the test and on the homework because one question they're going to ask you go smallest to largest. Next question they're going to turn it around on you and say go largest to smallest. You write them in the wrong order, then they're not going to know. Shelby, what time did you say? I said 10 oh, I thought you said 818. Why did I give you that paper? What? So why did I give you that paper? So largest angle in a triangle is always opposite the, the longest side, and the smallest <coughs> angle is always opposite the shortest side. And the middle angle is always opposite the middle side. So in this, again, same thing. 
I come in here, I find the largest angle usually. Draw me a little arrow. What's that tell me about that side over there? The That's the longest. Find the next biggest angle, it looks like that one. What's that tell me about this side down here? It's the middle one. And then now what's that tell me about that third side over there? That's the smallest or the shortest. Any of the words you want to use, I don't care how you do it, as long as you understand how to do it. I'm going to put these symbols here again, less than symbols. How many letters to name a segment? <coughs> Two. Name me the, uh, which segment's going to go here, longest or the shortest? Shortest. Shortest. So segment BC, use it, your symbols. What goes in the middle here? AC. AC. Make sure you're using your symbols. <coughs> What's the longest one? AB, segment AB. I'm not even going to write it turned around. Everybody can turn it around themselves, right? What's going to happen if you make it the greater than symbol instead of the less than symbol? Longest one goes first. Longest one goes first, then the middle one, then that one goes over there. So that's for, that's for one triangle. So if we have one triangle, we can always tell what's the longest side, what's the shortest side. So if I have an angle like this right here, that's a pretty small angle, right? So what do you know about this side over here? It's probably going to be the shortest. The bigger I make that angle, if it becomes an obtuse angle, now what do I know about this side from here to there? It's got to be the longest because if where my hand's at is an obtuse angle, can any of the other angles be bigger than that? No, because the triangle can only have one obtuse angle in it. All right, triangle inequality theorem. Write this down. <coughs> this is the triangle inequality theorem. This is the one you wrote down on the quiz. And it's probably the most important theorem that we're covering today. Because all these other theorems are based off of it. As a matter of fact, in a lot of books, th those last two theorems that we had weren't called theorems. They were called corollaries. Anybody remember why we said those are called corollaries, even though we said we weren't going to worry about corollaries? What's a corollary? What's a corollary in your body? Nobody knows that. Nobody takes biology. What's, what's going on? That correlates with something else. That's sort of true. Corollary in your body is a smaller vein, I guess. I don't know, I'm probably using the wrong terminology here. That runs from bigger ones, right? Is that right? So they branch off. They're littler ones. And that's sort of what this theorem is like the big vein, and all those other theorems that we're writing down are the smaller ones branching off of that. They all came from that. On the homework, they're going to ask you, they're going to give you three numbers and they're going to say, can this be a triangle? Are you just going to say, yeah, it can be a triangle, it's got three sides. Doesn't work that way. All right? You look at the numbers, you decide whether it can be a triangle. Is it easier to prove something can be a triangle or can't be a triangle? Can. How many things you got to show to prove it can't be a triangle? Just one. How many do you have to show to prove that it can be a triangle? Whoa. All of them, which in the case of a triangle is three different things. And I'm going to show you those three things with this triangle that I have. Actually, we're going to show it with this triangle, then we're going to switch the numbers on this triangle. So we're looking at this triangle, and it says, can this be a triangle? What are you going to tell me? <coughs> no, this can't be a triangle. Now, you can't just tell me no. You've got to give me a reason, right? We've been doing that all year long. You have to give me a reason why it can't be a triangle. Tell me why it can't be a triangle. Because the sum of the two sides. Give me the sides. 13 plus 3. And that should be greater than what? 
that should be greater than the third side, which is 17. Is 13 plus 3 greater than 17? This doesn't work. So that shows me that that can't be a triangle. That's all you need. If you're proving that it's not a triangle, that's all you need is that one thing to show me, hey, this can't be a triangle because 13 plus 3 isn't greater than 17. That's it. That says there's no triangle in our world that can be that have the links uh, sides that we have listed there. So if I put 10 in there, and now I say, can this be a triangle? And you say, what? No. You say yes. Can you just say yes? No, no you got to prove it to me. So we say 13 plus 10 is greater than what? 17, is that true? Yeah. Now is that enough to say it's a triangle? No, we need to do all of them. Give me the others. Seventeen plus thirteen should be greater than what? Ten. Ten. Is that true? Yeah. What's the other one? Ten plus seventeen should be greater than thirteen. Should be greater than thirteen. Is that true? If all of those are true, what's that tell me about that? That can be a triangle. So here we had to prove all of them, all three, to show yes, it is a triangle. One to prove that it's not a triangle. So if I just give you numbers like this, can that be a triangle? No? Tell me why not. Three plus four should be greater than what? Five, is it? Yeah? So that one works, that's true, so that doesn't help us prove that it's not. Five plus four is greater than three. Is that true? What's the last one? Three plus five should be greater than what? Four. Is that true? So what are we going to change our answer here to? Yes, that does work. So you've got to be able to write it out and prove it. Don't confuse yourself. Don't, don't write this down. All I want you to do is watch. We're going to write an inequality. Actually, you could write down this example if you wanted. We're going to write an inequality if you draw this triangle. Draw this triangle and just write 17 and 13 on two of the sides and X on the third side. We want to figure out what this side could be. We can't find the exact number for this third side, but we can find a range. So we're looking for a range for the third side. What I do a lot of times when I'm doing one of these problems, instead of using X, is I write this. Third side. I know the third side's got to be between some number and some other number. And the way we're going to find that, and you might want to write this down the way you, you find it. How do you think we find this? Uh, let's do the high limit over here because Joe already told us earlier. How do we find the highest it could go up to? So to find the high limit, to find the high limit, you just add the two sides. Add the two sides that you know. Find the high limit, you add the two sides. So for this one, what am I going to add? 17 and 13. What's 17 plus 13? It's 30. So what's the highest that third side could go up to? 30. And that's not actually true, and we're going to talk about that here in a minute, but that's going to get us to where we need to be. How are we going to find the low side? So to find the low limit, you subtract the two sides. So subtract those two sides for me. 4. 17 minus 13 is 4. So that third side, we don't know exactly what it is, but we do know it's got to be between what two numbers? 4 and 30. So give me a number it could be. 25, I heard. Would that work out to be a triangle then? Give me a number it can't be. 38. 
All right? Now, let's go back to the 4 and the 30. Could it be 4? If I put 4 in there, let's try it. What's 4 plus 13? Is that bigger than 17? So can it be 4? Notice, it can't be the two ends. It's got to be between. Not between 5 and 31. Between 4 and 30 because could it be this? I need to keep going, Joe. I mean, can. Could it be that? No. What's 13 plus that? 17 point all that, right? Is that going to be greater than 17? Yeah. Could it be this? Could it be that? So it goes completely up to 4, but it couldn't be 4, and it couldn't be 30. All right, the hinge, the two hinge theorems. Go ahead and write this down. The hinge theorems deals with two separate triangles. It's comparing two separate triangles. So the Hinge theorem says if two sides of one triangle are congruent to two sides of a second triangle, then the included angle of, uh, in the first triangle is larger, if the included angle in the first triangle is larger than the included angle in the second triangle, then the third side in the first triangle must be longer than the third side in the second triangle. Maverick understood every bit of that, right? I wouldn't understand any of it. I didn't understand it as I was reading it. So here in a second, me and Sam are going to demonstrate it for you, and then Raven's going to understand it completely because it's not that difficult, except for Daytona because he's taking Ricky's spot and dozing off on me all the time. Ricky, I'm going to have to start having you smack him, all right? been sick here lately, Daytona? That's why I haven't messed with you much, because I figured you had. You know, Sam, I'm not talking about sick in his head or anything like that, an actual illness. Sam's trying to be a mean person over here and say there's something wrong with your brain or something. <laughs> so Sam's got two sides that he's going to use for his two triangles. He's got a blue and a white. Sam, how long is your blue one? 12 inches. How long is your white one? 12. So Sam's and mine are the same, right? He's got two sides. I got two sides that are the same. Put yours together and make it make an angle. So hold it. You got to hold it up. Yeah, you're going to have to hold it like this because you can't. Can you handle that? All right. So Sam's got that. Does everybody see the third side in his triangle? Imagine it's there. He's got an acute angle there. He's got that third side. Now, I'm going to make my two sides, they're the exact same length as his two sides, I'm going to make it look like this. What do we know about my third side compared to his third side? It's larger, it's larger because what was true about my angle right here? It was bigger than his angle. And that's all this theorem says. This angle in this triangle is bigger than that angle in that triangle then what has to be true about the third side in each triangle? This one has to be longer than that one. All right? That's all this theorem says. So 
looking at this. We're going to write this down here real quick. That's 84. That's 42. What can you tell me about segment AL? AL has to be longer than segment, oops, segment NB. AL has to be longer than NB. That's all that theorem says. We got the converse of it. Guess what the converse is going to say? Just the opposite. It's going to, it's, what it's going to do, it's going to say, look, this side's longer this time, so what's that tell us about that angle right there? It's got to be bigger than that angle right there. So I'm, we're not even going to write it down. I was hoping we'd get to that worksheet, but we didn't stick it in your notes. We'll probably do some of it next time. That's your assignment.